Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. All right, welcome to a video. This is going to be a blast. So I had a lot of fun looking at Al Jaffe art yesterday. And as I was getting the video together for the Al Jaffe tribute, uh, I started looking at some other Mad Magazine content. And I just felt like, man, I really wanted to do more. A lot of people in the comment section seem to really enjoy it. And Sergio Aragonas is still with us and is, is such a great artist and um, such a lovable person and has so much personality. One thing that I noticed getting together the Al Jaffe video was that when I would see photos of the core mad creators, they all have so much personality just in them themselves their faces they could all be like actors or um you know co comedians um, and sergio is really really um just kind of captures that the guy and the guy is so lovable like you when you meet him he's like your awesome uncle um that that you know you love seeing um once a year you know if you see him in a, a specific co comic book convention or whatever but uh, not, not only is he um just a gr like a great lovable person he's really really good his stuff is incredibly detailed uh, i've got some really clever work that he's done i've got work that i guarantee most people that watch this video will have never seen um, of him doing art that is not what you expect him to do. It's very, very well drawn. Not, not uh, how would I put this? Um, uh, way more. Um, oh god, what would you call it? Leans like like it's not cartoony. It's very realistic. It looks like something that could be in like a real serious like drama type thing. It's very, very interesting to see. Uh, I've got color work. I've got a ton of original art. So let's settle in and get get to this. There's going to be a lot of laughs and a lot of very, very kick-ass drawings. And his stuff is just insane. So this is Sergio. These are some of his toys that he has in his studio. Um, as we get into the art, I, I honestly had some questions myself about it. Here's another photo of him. I, I really never saw any indication of pencil in his work. But there's a pencil sharpener on his desk here. Uh, and so I, I assume that he must pencil real lightly and then erases it or maybe just he, he could just block like block in stuff. Maybe he just does like a little ellipses and a lot of the heavy lifting of the detail that he puts in is done with a pen. Um, but I, I really don't know. It looks like he uses markers of some sort. I mean, these don't look like dipping pens. And I don't see ink um, like an inkwell on his desk. It's not to say that he never does, but um, we'll see. And he works flat. You know, which is interesting. Or he's working flat here, we'll say. There's another picture of him being a ham. A ham hawk. One interesting thing that I can point out. So so Donald Duck is like... I have a friend whose dad is a really famous um, fine art painter. Gottfried Helmwin. Um, and he loved Donald Duck too. And Donald Duck represents um, a lot of things for people outside of the U.S. Uh, it's a real interesting thing. I don't want to get into the whole, like, uh, thing, because we've got a lot of art to look at. But uh, I, I found it interesting that he has, like, a, a lot of Donald Duck stuff, because uh, Gottfried um, really loved that stuff, too. So this is a color piece. It, 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 it is interesting to me how his work is colored. Like this is pretty mellow, all things considered for digital color. But sometimes there's a, there's a, a few books that he did. Um, there's a Star Wars book and some other stuff that he did that is really heavily colored. And it almost does distract a little bit from his art. I, I think that a little bit of gradients looks nice. But um, you know you could almost do flat colors on his work too and it would work fine. Obviously, he's the artist, though, and he knows what he likes, so. But this is Gru. Here's one more. I just grabbed, like, four photos of him. I just thought he was so funny. <laughs> Don't put gasoline in your coffee. That's another color piece. Again, digital colors. He, you know, he did a lot of other work besides Gru. And it's, it's funny is there was a there was a bit that he would do like a gag series that he did. Oh, okay, let me get out of this for a second. I want to grab these pieces since we're uh, here already. Hope I can find them. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay. So let me 
just get to the front end of these. So it must be 11. Okay. So this is Sergio's Pencils with Neil Adams inks. And this is from 1970. And I'll read you Neil Adams quotes right here first. So Neil Adams and Sergio Aragonis, The Witching Hour Number 8, complete six-page story above and beyond the call of duty, duty, original art, 1970 DC Comics. So the story definitely has the Neil Adams stamp, but according to Adams himself, Sergio Aragonis wrote and penciled the story. Adams relates that he um, asked if he could draw the story, but so loved Aragonis' original pencils, he decided to essentially ink them. So, uh, anyway, and there's a little bit of details on the art, but... So this is Neil Adams inking Sergio Aragonis pencils, and this is like you would never, ever in a million years. And I know, I know people that are Neil Adams fans or that that are aware of Adams will go, well, Adams really like did Adams over him. But this structure is nothing like how you would see Sergio draw, or think of him drawing. And you'll see as we move along, even more examples of that. But it's it's interesting to see this side of Sergio's work that you might not expect, because um, clearly he could draw his ass off if he's doing stuff like this. It's fascinating seeing um, Neil's inks too at this period, because uh, I mean, so good. And Sergio did some other um, ghost story type stuff around this time, and sometimes he would go into the what you would more familiarize. There's a really um, kind of like um, Christmas Carol short story. It's a three pager that he did that um, is more in his classic stuff. This is really nice. This is cute. It would be really interesting to see what the original um, pencil layouts look like, but clearly, I mean, it was somewhat realistic structure for Sergio for sure and tomorrow I'm going to do more Drucker so for people that are interested in seeing uh, uh, some more Drucker there's a like you forgot a black right here you see that um And if there's anyone else that you want to request from Mad Magazine, that I'm, I'm when we could look at some Spy versus Spy. It's not like the most uh, dynamic art, but the was always a favorite. I think of most people that were into Mad Magazine. Yeah, I was I was going through some of the earlier issues of Mad Magazine. And I just went like, man, there's so much good art. We really, really need to look at some more of the artists. So I had decided yesterday that I was going to do three in a row. Hit. Sergio and Mort Drucker after Al Jaffe. But really interesting. Okay, so let's get into the more Sergio, Sergio. I think that was the last page. Yeah. All right, so let's go full screen mode. So, I mean, when I first started looking at this stuff this morning, I've seen Gru a million times. I have a bunch of the comics. Um, uh, you know, my first thought was, like, it looks really fun to do. This is a pretty detailed page, but some of the more simple pages you look at and you go, and that would be really fun, like on the side to to do like a cartoon, you know, cartoon strip or something like that. And uh, it's interesting that Stan Sakai lettered um, the story. Uh, but you start to get into Sergio's like more serious work, serious cartooning work. It's almost terrifying how crazy he is, <laughs> to be honest. It's like started giving me an anxiety attack. Not not literally, but but um, I I was looking at just going like, how much does this guy draw in a day? Like this must take freaking hours. Even if you're jamming, that's that's why I was saying that I'm not. I wasn't a hundred percent sure. It looks like there's some blue pencil here, which is kind of trippy. Yeah, I see a little bit of blue pencil, but it's not all over the piece. Yeah, I really couldn't see any indication of, of pencils throughout the, the drawings. So usually you'd see a little bit of, like, you know, where it wasn't erased or something like that. It's not super noticeable. Some really, really funny stuff if you've got the, the patience to look through his work and 
pick out little storytelling beats and stuff that he did. These are fun. These are just like little um, sketches that were included. But again, just beautiful, beautiful inking. And that looks like a nib to me. That doesn't look like a marker. It may be, but it doesn't look like it. He's got a very bouncy line. And, um, you know, the calligraphy to me reads a little bit like a pen. Oh, here's, you can see a little bit of the blue pencil here. Okay. I see it here, but I, I just, uh, some of these other pieces. Oh, it's interesting. That's funny. <laughs> uh, some of this stuff is so funny. Oh, this is getting a pie in the face. I can't imagine going to a dinner with, like, four mad creators. It's probably, you probably leave with like your face and stomach sore from laughing. These guys are crazy. Oh, this is so cool. He really came up with a very weird nose. I, I had mentioned yesterday as a kid, I would copy in particular Don Martin stuff, a little bit of Sergio Aragonis and Al Jaffe. And one of the things that I would key in on was whenever they would use perspective, if there was ever anything at like an interesting angle, I was always obsessed with like things that were turned a little bit. And then th they would do like weird feet or weird faces. And it was so subtle. I mean, not subtle wouldn't be the right word, but um, you'd be surprised how tricky it is to nail a goofy nose and make it look right. I've always talked about... As a kid, I was a big fan of Scooby-Doo and how difficult Scooby in particular is to draw. <clears throat> the girls, too, if you don't get it right on model, it never looks right. And in fact, if you were a kid and were into cartoons, sometimes when they would change art teams, like Tom and Jerry, Tom and Jerry had a very specific look, uh, and then another company took it over. I don't remember what happened, but at some point, Tom and Jerry didn't really look exactly like Tom and Jerry. It's really close, but the subtleties are off. And Scooby-Doo was like that, too. But yeah, like, um, even as a kid, I was very aware of that and would be so particular about, like, getting the, um, the nuance that made it look like their work and not just kind of like their work. These are fantastic. I had forgot about these. So these are, these are, I think it's called the shadow nose, but it's, it's kind of like what's going on and then the fantasy. They're really, really funny. You got the guy digging, you know, plumber, city worker, and, and the fantasy is he's found pirate treasure. This kid running off to play with the other kids when he's with his stuffy mom. This is pretty funny. This Black Panther guy meeting this white guy, and he's, like, all freaked out. <laughs> pretty accurate. Um, this is good. He's, like, trying to be all brave for the girls. I mean, I don't need to explain to you guys can see what they are, but um, they're really, really funny, really cute. I guess they're both disappointed. Oh, she's fainting from embarrassment. This is pretty funny. <laughs> oh, man, some of these are so bad. That's funny. Yeah, these are great. I love these as a kid. I had completely, completely forgot about these. They're really, really clever. Very, very funny. That's a great sheet of gags. Man, they're great. This is, oh, I think that was amazing. So funny. This is nuts. Like this was the, this might have been the piece where I was like going like this looks fun, and then I saw this and I was like this does not look fun. <laughs> this looks like freaking self abuse. Look at that. It's crazy. <laughs> Was he like stinky? So everyone's like around him or he's just so gross that they're all. I guess I went the wrong way. I, I'm trying to figure out this joke. Oh, they think that they're girls. That's funny. <laughs> oh, gosh. 
kind of I'm kind of going through these backwards. So let's see. He's making his move. She's happy. Oh, and then he's just grabbing popcorn. Ah, oh, that's funny. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, and they're all the kids are all running into the X-rated movie too. I didn't realize it was an X-rated movie. I didn't see the sign. I was focused on this. That's hysterical too. This is good shit, man. I'm telling you. Oh, gross. This one was a little blurry. I was kind of bummed out. Like, this is a heritage scan, but sometimes the, the, if there are super old auctions, uh, the resolution wasn't so good. But this is pretty interesting. This is like, I don't know. This is the Taliban or what this was supposed to be. Does it have a title? They're training to, like, hijack a plane. We got the... Ayatollah Khomeini, maybe? I'm not really sure. This looks like a great piece, though. I mean, honestly, I, I really do wish that this was clearer, because it's, it's got some pretty clever satire going on in here. You know, and, and, you know, in this politically correct time that we live in, I really do feel that a lot of the stuff that Mad Magazine did would not be, it would not be acceptable now. Although, I, I, I think that there are still publishers and TV shows that, that push that. This is pretty cool. Man, nice inks. He's getting such an interesting line. I can't imagine this is marker. Because this, like, how the lines kind of get thicker and thinner and stuff like that. It's pretty interesting. Chicago, 1985. So I don't know what tool he would have brought to a convention. I mean, you could bring nibs and stuff like that. This is great, too. This was the stuff that I saw that I went like, man, it would be really fun to just draw some stuff like this, you know. Every morning, wake up, spend like 45 minutes and see what you could get done. You'd get better and better at it, too. That's the thing is, you know, the first month or two that you did it, they probably would be like so-so. But as you stuck to it, you'd be able to manage your time better. You'd have better ideas. You'd be, you know, the night before, you'd be sort of imagining what you're going to draw. Um, this is cool. But yeah, like like this face, okay, like as an example, like to to really nail like a Sergio face, I'm talking about the character right in the dead center here, to get the, the that weird nose and eyes and mouth and really have it kind of feel like the structure that he's got going on, it'd be harder than you think, you know. Even just the shape of his head and body too, it's all it's more structurally sound than you might imagine. But for him, he's just got the shapes down, so he knows exactly. It's no different than really drawing, like, any anything, to be honest. Joe Matarera uses his own shapes. Jim Lee, whoever it is, if they draw out of their head, you know, they have certain um, proportions and stuff that they use for stuff. So he's calling in this. The more oxygen... She runs back out. And brings a crown. What is this? Oh, I don't know. I don't really understand the joke. It's a princess or something? It must be someone famous going to have a baby. I don't know. All right. This one was interesting. I was trying to figure out like, if it looks like a wedding. Oh, it's a nightclub. God, I can't believe he draws all this. Well, you know, and the other thing too is he keeps his size relationships of the characters quite, quite good. You know, it's not like some of the characters are too big or too small or their heads are disproportionate. I mean, he really actually has a pretty nice balance of size of everything. Oh, look at the band. It's funny. He drew a Comic-Con oh, <laughs> at the band. The band is a bunch of, like, freaks. He's got, like, a skull on his drums. That's funny shit. Um, he's got some interesting cabinets that he gave them. That's funny. 
but um, he, he drew a Comic Con piece too. Unfortunately, it's one of those sort of dull scans, but it, it looks really good. But Jaffe had one too yesterday. This is nice. Yeah, I have to... Like, this is a funny joke, too. So, Pie Piper comes running through. He's, like, summoned all the rats. And he's arguing with, like, the flute sales lady. And he gets a new flute that summons the ladies. Much better flute. Now he looks mad, though. Maybe I missed the joke. So, he summons the rats. He looks pretty happy. And then they're laughing at him. And he walks off mad. Hmm. I'll have to let that one settle in. Oh, this was interesting. Look at this. So they're filming this scene. Oh, wait. So we've got a photographer. He's going to take a picture of the banditos. Look at this. Isn't that crazy? There's so much going on in here. It's so cool, man. I, I you know, it was interesting is I think that that in some ways I was thinking about this for a band yesterday. It's a popular band. I won't say the name, but but I think that people people start to sleep on stuff, and then when something is over, whether a band breaks up or an artist stops working, all of a sudden, then you really appreciate like what they did, and that no one else really ever did what they did, and the whole body of work is then seen in a very different way. I really feel I look spy. I don't know if you can see it, but right here, there's one of the spies. Oh, there's the other one. Right there. See? We were just goofing around and we spotted some cool Easter eggs. You know, it, it's interesting saying that because I, I haven't talked about that in a long time. But I've always liked to hide stuff in my art. And, and I used to say that it came from Mad Magazine. Um, the like stuff in the gutters and it really actually did kind of derive from Sergio I mean it, it's not something that I thought about a lot in the last maybe five to ten years but when I, when I started to draw more and then you start to kind of go like where did I get that like why do I do that particular thing or where did it come from I did realize that some of it definitely came from Mad Magazine and in particular someone like a Sergio but I always like to hide stuff in my art. I like stuff that's like puzzles. I like stuff that maybe if you flip the page upside down, all of a sudden it looks like another drawing or the silhouette. I, I, I snuck a Darth Vader head in a full piece one time. And um, I had even forgot that I had done it. And it was hard to see, but as a thumbnail, you could see it. So... I think a lot of my mischievous behavior in art comes from stuff like this. <laughs> Again, one of those noses with the eyes. It's so crazy. I wonder how many different, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's sort of the classic cartoon nose that you see. I wonder how he how this nose came to be if it was an accident one day or if he was just like going like man i gotta come up with a different nose than just the bulbous sort of you know egg shaped nose because he's got a bunch of them like here he gave brew the like broken fighter nose and who knows you're probably spotting all kinds of funny jokes in here that i'm not even seeing it's a lot to take in. That's nuts. Let's see what this is. Oh, <coughs> this was a, a roller skating thing that he did. I'm going to guess this was probably in the late 70s. 
roller skating got very, very hot. So not only was it like something that people like to do as a pastime, but I mean, everybody was skating and roller derby was big and it just, it was a real big fad. Even grandmas want to get their roller skates on. If you were going to go on a date, you might go to the roller skating rink. The kid's like, I'm out of here, Mom. I ain't going to do that. Oh, oh, haha. <laughs> he goes over. Oh, God. There's a blind person in there. <laughs> it's funny. Roller skating school. flasher i remember this gag that's funny that's really really funny i remember this wow i wonder if i had this issue that's really weird i i remember that drawing so clearly as a kid man that's wild oh i remember this too interesting wow what a trip so this is Mad 217. That, that sounds about right. You know, I was looking at the prices of the Mad Magazine. I was looking at 30 centers. I was trying to remember what the price of the magazine was when I was buying it. I couldn't remember. But but it was, I was looking at issue, I think, 101, and it was 30 cents. But two, whatever that number was, 217, 271, whatever, whatever I said, um, uh, that would be probably around the price that I was, what I would get him as a kid. So this is pretty funny. This is like the kind of the, the fantasy versus the reality. But this guy's just like, ah, oh, you find treasure and guns and gold. And he's like, nah, keys. <laughs> this is great. Let me see if I can get the joke on that. I guess he was dreaming about the girls? I don't get this joke. Huh. Yeah, that one kind of escapes me. Oh, this is funny. <laughs> okay, let's go right here. Oh. oh, maybe he had a bunch of these dreams. Maybe it was part of this whole thing. I think this was a part of the like long. oh it was four parts that might have been i get it. it there was more to the joke i think like it goes one two three four or something this is pretty funny though dogs must be leashed and then she takes off her bra puts it around the dog and then her boobs are jiggling <laughs> Oh, oil. They got oil on their feet, I think, from, like, pollution. It's the sun. Oh, the sun's going down, so they're all trying to get the sun here. That's my guess. Yeah, it went behind the buildings. Very clever. Very clever, Mr. Sergio. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> he's holding his stomach. Or, oh, he was making himself look fat because they were not pretty. That's pretty funny, too. <laughs> he made his eyes cross-eyed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, the kids messed with her. Children will be children. Oh, and this is more of the other gags that, that like, again, the continuation of some of those other jokes. So. I 
thought this was kind of cute. He actually, he had a piece. I don't remember if I if it ended up in here. Oh, I, I didn't. It was from a ghost story that he did. But he actually did a lot of, like, almost like Edward Gorey, like, hatching in the background. You can see a little bit of it here. But he went pretty nuts on this one piece that I saw where he had, like, a ton of, like, hatching on a page. I was like, wow, you go. Oh, that's so cool. I actually saw a car in the parking lot today at the grocery store that said Rat Fink. I was surprised. I think it was Rat Fink 1. But uh, I was like, you go, dude. You got the Rat Fink driver license plates. That's pretty badass. These are stickers. And they were showing how to use them. But it's pretty funny because I think... Um, I, I'm not sure what the red vellum would be. Everything's cheaper across the street. Oh, you put, like, the sticker there. If you lost your money, bang here. Oh. <laughs> Attention, car thieves. This is a stolen car to begin with. <laughs> it looks like a little, like, Sergio. I looked for you all through the meal. Now you look for the tip. Ouch. Sergio. Jeez Louise. Save water. Shower with your steady. Ooh. Nice. Then he got punched though. And the mustache. I wonder if they really had stickers. These were simpler times, friends. A mad look behind the scenes at Mad TV. So I guess this would have been 90s. Pretty crazy drawing, though. Again, this is where he gets, like, where it starts to almost look, like, um, psychotic. <laughs> Got Jason. Or is that Michael Myers? That's Michael Myers. Wait. Where's the chainsaw? Jason. Always go with your first instincts. That's pretty cool of all the lighting rig stuff that he has up there. Oh god, there's like bats or some creatures. Reggae band, I guess. They look like Rastafarians to me a little bit. Or they're just like a hippie band. Okay. <clears throat> Another groove. Some nice inking back here. Would be interesting to see him ink someone like Frank Miller, like on a piece. I think he could have done a great job. Like, he's got really, really actually awesome inks. This is cool. And again, Stan Sakai letters. I, I didn't know that Stan was a letterer, to be 100% honest. This was the first that I'd ever noticed that. <laughs> the legs. This is pretty cool. This is wild. Here's some gags. Let's see the gags. Yeah, pretty much. Dad's putting the kids' bike together and the kids all crashed out. <laughs> the bike. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny shit. Oh. <laughs> He's trying to ride it. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, now the kids want that bike. That was a good. That was a good little. That was a good joke. That was pretty funny. A bicycle built for few. Oh, okay. This is the beginning of the joke. That's really funny, man. This was one auction. You got the whole enchilada. Pretty cool. 
think it's a very nice joke. Well drawn. Funny. It would be a nice little collectible. Some more of the shadows. These are cool. So Alfred E. Newman's on a skateboard, but he's fantasizing about surfing a wave, a tube. He wants the hottie, not, I don't know, maybe it's like his wife. He's picking up at the airport or something. This guy is fantasizing. He's got a pretty lady. Got the love thy neighbor guy. Wants to beat the crap out of the dudes with the signs. Oh, his fantasy is that he's a kid leading soldiers, I guess. Interesting. <laughs> what is around that guy's neck? Is it a serape? Oh, haha. <laughs> they were all cactuses in the back. That's pretty funny. Propaganda. Oh, man. This is crazy. I think I grabbed this one twice. We, I don't think we've seen it yet, but um, I, I think I might have grabbed this page two times. Pretty cool piece. I, actually, pretty nice perspective on it, too. Like, the shot is pretty, pretty awesome. I really think that this is fantastic art. I'm obviously anyone that stuck it out this far agrees with me. I mean, you know, is is into it or you'd, you'd already be bailing out, but he is really, really freaking good. You can see a little bit of the pencil here. Finally, he really, he really doesn't leave too much, um, indication of his pencils, but get little glimpses, but these finished pieces look pretty immaculate. Occasionally, I'll see a little tiny bit of white out. You can see the blue pencil here a little. What's interesting, though, is that his blue pencil usually isn't in the interior of the art. I've noticed that multiple times where you'll see, like, the silhouette, but you don't see it, like, on the stuff where you would think you would see it. Like, you don't see this figure all drawn in blue. Like, there's no lines for the legs. It's very weird, but it'll, it's, it'll always be around the silhouette, like this. He may use a light box. It's possible that he light boxes some of this stuff onto the board. Really don't know. I'm gonna look around online after the video and see if I can find any um, videos on him. Maybe at home drawing at a comic book convention. I mean, he could definitely just knock some stuff out with a pen. He's got the miles on him from drawing all this stuff to just be able to probably well, not probably definitely he could just do this with a pen and no under drawing. This is a lot of practice. <laughs> He's been doing it for 50 years. God, it's insane. This is cute. Self-portrait. He's so perfect for a self-portrait. This is really funny that he's sitting there kind of trying to come up with an idea. And like beneath him, it's like all the ideas are sort of running around. Oh, the silhouette is great. See, grew. Oh, it says toys. This is these are his tools. I actually thought this was more of the ideas, but I think that's like if the stuff that he had around his office, he had that. Man, that's an awesome piece. This was funny. <laughs> it's like laughing at him. <laughs> then he wins. And then this is good too. Nice height. It's gonna be bad. <laughs> yeah, okay, we saw this one already. Look at this. Oh, okay, we saw this one already too. All things considered, there's not a lot of Sergio Aragonis original art out there for sale. There was. 300 pieces on heritage give or take doesn't necessarily mean that they were all art but there was about 300 completed auctions for original art for him considering the body of work this guy's created in his career that is a drop in the bucket man that's not even probably a year's worth of drawings for him although they're spread out through many years but you get what i'm saying so he's sitting on potentially a ton of original art it's pretty insane
I should kind of start to wrap this up, so we'll go a little faster. tried not to just grab Gru. He's done a lot of he's done a lot of different stuff. I mean, he's got some stuff in one of the Hellboy books. I, I like I mentioned before he done Star Wars. There's some sci-fi series that he did in the early 2000s that look pretty cool. Um so there's a decent variety of stuff. He did a lot of issues of Gru though. I mean, this is issue number 46. This is from 1988. So he worked on Gru for years. This is a really nice drawing. Stuff like this kind of reminds me of um, uh, Chris Boccolo steampunk. Not not the actual, the, like the look of the art, but the sort of scale of the piece. Someone asked yesterday, because uh, I had mentioned that Chris Boccolo would occasionally ink little things in steampunk. It was very few, just to be clear, so that you don't get confused. Like, we did probably 270 pages of steampunk he maybe inked like 12 figures out of 270 pages meaning that like in one panel maybe he would ink like a girl that he wanted to put zip on or a monster guy crawling on the floor he'd want dry brush or something shadow so it wasn't it wasn't a lot and in fact i don't i don't remember him doing it after the first issue or two so but um yeah usually if the inks look super dry brushy or kind of chunky and a little more gritty um it could be chris ink inked um something i think he no he normally did it to blend in the zipatone this is funny <laughs> she left with curlers in her hair <laughs> that's pretty funny they're both scared of batman understandably so plastic man grabbing toilet paper from another thing it's funny oh ymca <laughs> oh what did he do did he change or something Hold on, what's the joke here? So he looks, he's flying, he's got x-ray vision, and he looks into the building and sees, like, furniture. And then this, he's kind of embarrassed, or he's happy? I don't know what he saw. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really get that one. It'd be one thing if it was like a girl getting changed or something, but like he looks like he's blushing. Unless, oh, oh, then he flew to the YMCA to look at the peep at them. I guess maybe that's the joke. This was the Comic Con one. Like I said, I wish it was a little more clear, so you can see the Mad Guy signing. There's Sergio right there. But, yeah, it's not a great scan, unfortunately. But uh, I bet there's so many funny things in here. I'll, I'm going to probably look this one up and see. Oh, there's Beetle Bailey. Uh, see if I can find um, the published version of it. Because I would like to see this as a higher res uh, thing. Because it looks fun. looks funny. And again, I mean, one of the things that he did really fantastic here is he's got all these sort of uh, characters, you know, I don't, foreground, background is a little, you know, it's, it's, it's in a perspective, we'll say, but he really kept a balance of the size of the figures really, really well. It doesn't look off, you know, you don't see characters that look disproportionate um, back here, like overly big, unless they're supposed to be fat or tall or in like a huge costume, but he really nails it really really brilliant piece man i mean this piece of original art is just it's a grand slam you know that's so awesome cosplayers pretty funny I mean, there's lots of cosplayers but it looks fun it 
looks fun. Okay, that's it. So I hope that that was enjoyable and that you got a kick out of some of Sergio's art and maybe got a laugh or two at some of his jokes. And uh, yeah, you know, let's celebrate these guys where they're still here. And tomorrow we'll do more Drucker, who is going to be awesome. And if you have any other mad artists that you'd like me to look at before we wrap up our couple of mad episodes, let me know. Because it's a fun way to start the morning laughing and looking at some fun cartooning art. I really enjoyed it yesterday. So, okay, have a great day. I'll talk to you later. And...